Let's start. Let's yep. jump in. Please. Perfect. So yeah, good morning, everyone. Good morning to all the early birds here in this virtual room. Um, and welcome to our session on Innovate in Free Knowledge. Um, well, in this session, just to set the stage here, um, Ivana and I, we um, want to talk and discuss with you uh, how we as a movement can promote innovation and attract innovators for free knowledge. And since we are here in the CEE meeting, um, we'll set the focus on the CEE region. And so by the end of this session, we uh, truly hope that you and we all could gain an understanding of how important innovation and new projects are for the sustainability of our movement. Um, you could learn about and be inspired by a innovation driven format, um, which is the analog accelerator. And um, you guys could also contribute to the further development of this program with a CEE perspective. And um, your session hosts today are Ivana and me, maybe. Um, Ivana, do you want to just briefly give a intro of who you are, where are you right now? <laughs> Okay, thank you, Kanika. Uh, good morning to you all, and thank you for coming to our session. Uh, so I'm Ivana Madarevic. Uh, I know a, a lot of here uh, participants at this session, uh, so I'm glad you're here. Uh, so um, today, we, as Kanika said, we are going to talk about uh, the innovation, and um, uh, my part in this is um, that I've participated in the Unlock project that Wikimedia uh, Deutschland um, started it. So um, I'm going to uh, talk about my role. And I just want um, to, to remind every one of you that you can contribute to the Etherpad. I've sent a link to the chat. So um, I think we can start. Perfect. Um, and I'm the second host here, Kanika. Um, uh, I'm the program lead and responsible for the design and implementation of the Unlock Accelerator um, that I will talk about in a minute. Um, I joined Wikimedia Deutschland in summer 2019. And um, yeah, I'm based here in uh, Berlin, Germany, and I'm really looking forward to our conversation and discussion later. Um, so I think this is all set and I would just uh, start sharing my screen and, um, uh, you know, present the presentation, then walk you through this a little bit. This is here and all right. Can you see the presentation? Yes. Ah, perfect. Very cool. All right. So um, why innovate in free knowledge? And uh, why are we having this conversation? Because we want to unlock the journey towards Wikimedia 2030. And as you all know, we want to become the essential infrastructure of the ecosystem of free knowledge. And anyone who shares our vision will be able to join. So social and technical innovations are going to be crucial to master the challenges towards 2030 in order to co-create with underrepresented uh, co-create knowledge with underrepresented communities and include all the voices here as diverse, as inclusive as we are here in the community. And um, I know that innovation has become somehow a buzzword. Um, and I would love to just, you know, give an idea of what exactly does it mean in our context, referring to recommendation nine, which is innovate in free knowledge, as described to new ideas, new form of knowledge, new products that bring underrepresented communities and knowledge to the center so that we are able to increase the sustainability and strengthen the innovative power of our movement. And um, well, for this to happen, 
we need to rethink current structures and um, or even co-create um, new pathways of support that innovations and innovators need in order to grow. And I would like to introduce you to one possible pathway to innovation that Wikimedia Deutschland designed and implemented, which is the Unlock Accelerator. And um, the, the program supports teams or projects that are working on new free knowledge, ideas, innovations, and initiatives, um, and help them develop this through coaching, exchange, and collaborations. The program was piloted in the German speaking areas in 2020 and was then scaled to European level this year. Um, Unlock is something totally different compared to a typical Wikimedia project grant or fund, um, as it is quite structured and cohort based um, and uh, very hands on as each team is paired with coaches and experts who help them advance their product development skills in order to validate their ideas and as well as to build prototypes by the end of the program. So just to give you an examples or some examples, um, what prototypes have been built um, through Unlock and uh, what, yeah, within these projects that we supported. In 2020, for instance, um, in the first edition, uh, we had this uh, great project of Audiopedia, which is an open source web applications providing audio content related to day-to-day -to -day topics such as health or diet, making this available and accessible to non-readers, particularly in the global south. Um, this year's project, um, or among these year's projects, um, was also Gov Directory, um, which shows how data from Wikidata can be reused for high impact projects, um, while at the same time improves the data in Wikidata. So it's an online platform and um, that collects and makes government accounts and services available and accessible to anyone. Um, I also included here um, the link to check out um, more projects that we supported in these two editions of Unlock to have a look of what types of new projects do we need and um, yeah, where are projects related to existing um, Wikimedia projects. So I think this is a very um, diverse collections um, that we have. And uh, by the way, for your information, um, the project Gov directory will run a session um, later today at, I think, 11 um, a.m. Central European time and showcasing the platform. So, um, yeah, go in and check. Um, what are the key learnings after two unlock editions? So what we've seen is that um, we receive 80 applications in total after two rounds of, um, of, of this program. We could support 10 projects team who could develop prototypes or new prototypes for free knowledge. And the feedback from the teams in both rounds were mostly positive as they assessed the program content to be very, very helpful, in particular when it comes to the coaching as well as the expert sessions that we provided. And what we also could see is that this program or this type of innovation driving program could provide the participants with the necessary knowledge and skills enhancing methods to drive the implementation of their projects forward. Um, we supported teams that could create new impulses for the free knowledge movement um, through their different approaches by developing other formats and tools for consuming and contributing knowledge. And interestingly, and I mean, not surprisingly, they also reach new target groups with their solution. What we also learn is 
um, or where we are quite happy about is um, the outreach, especially to new audiences who have not been part of the movement so far and are working on solutions that can contribute to our vision as well. And um, so this was a very positive experience of running two Unlock um, editions to say that um, social entrepreneurs or tech for good, civil tech startups have applied and some of them also were selected to join our program. Um, so what next? How do we further want to develop, unlock this type of program within our movement? Um, first of all, I think the focus would be to even more promote projects and project teams from communities that have been underrepresented in our movement. And the second um, point or aspect is is really important to us is to expand the program with partners, um, either from the Wikimedia movement and or even beyond. So people or organization that are active in, in civic tech, tech for good context, innovation context, acceleration context that have already in these existing um, structures and networks in place. All right, so now I would like to hand over to Ivana, who will add on this perspective of community building to this presentation and who will outline opportunities for the CE community. Ivana, are you ready? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. All so right. Like, can you, you just, just uh, stop yes. the screen? Okay. Uh, do you want me to share or we are going with your uh, I can just continue okay. sharing and you just tell yeah. me next. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, I was, um, as I said, I'm Ivana, and uh, I was involved um, in Unlock Project as a speaker on community management uh, topics. So, um, I was involved with this part um, uh, within the support from the expo experts. And um, it was really pleasing for me to be a part of it because uh, it was really interesting and different. Uh, it had different approach. Um, so uh, some of these projects have already built the community. So uh, we wanted to talk about the retention and the uh, community engagement, but uh, also some of these projects needed to build the community from the scratch. And that's why I wanted to share my insights um, regarding the, the creating the sense of the community and um, creating that um, sense uh, that they are part of something bigger. Uh, so my insights are, uh, so Kanika, you can go next. <laughs> I just put now the okay. So my insights are uh, focusing um, are actually extracted from my work from Wikimedia Serbia, and um, as you may know, I'm involved in community support program at Wikimedia Serbia, but I also do a lot of other um, activities and projects. Um, and um, two of these things uh, were connected to the Unlock um, project. It, it was kind of a uh, the thing uh, that I've um, uh, connected. It, it uh, those are micro grants and annual grants. Uh, so Wikimedia Serbia have these kind of grants um, uh, that are uh, grant program, but they are still different from uh, this project because um, this is different because of the involvement of innovation, involvement of um, uh, community outside of the Wikimedia movement. Uh, but I wanted to share my experience from uh, working with uh, within the, those. Um, activities and also uh, coordinating a lot of community pro uh, support projects. Uh, so Kanika, you can go next. Okay. Uh, why did I want to get involved in this? It was interesting because projects were focused on innovation and free knowledge in general. So no, not just in Wikimedia movement. As we know, we um, do have a lot of grant programs at, at the Wikimedia Foundation, at the chapters uh, grant programs. Uh, but it was different because uh, it was like thinking outside of the box. And those were the projects that uh, weren't 
some of those weren't um, focusing on Wikimedia projects as Wikipedia or Wikimedia Commons or Wikidata, but they were um, uh, were inspiring inspiring in terms uh, of uh, free knowledge and increasing that free knowledge and accessibility to, to it. Uh, the Unlock project was opened uh, for the projects uh, from European countries. So as Kanika said, in 2020, it was Germany uh, oriented, but then uh, it was um, uh, scaled to, to the European countries and chapters. Uh, and also um, it was interesting for me because uh, it, uh, it gave the chance to, to uh, a lot of enthusiasts and volunteers and people who want to get uh, involved into innovative projects. And this was also an opportunity for me to learn about these ideas and also get inspired. So I didn't came there just to talk about my experience and my knowledge from the community support, but also to learn from these ideas and from these project uh, teams that were really, really different and interesting. Okay, we can move on. So what we were talking about, uh, as I said, a lot of those um, project teams uh, have already had a community, but uh, they were the ones who wanted to uh, for their community to be built, to be developed. Uh, so we first talked about uh, what uh, were the steps of creating the community and creating that sense uh, and the value of the community, uh, but also if we have already established people and network of people who are working on some project and idea, then we have to um, uh, provide the support for them um, uh, within various uh, communication channels and various tools uh, that they can use. Uh, but also if you are supporting people, you want to uh, get them involved and get them engaged. So. Um, uh, community engagement was one of the, the great topic because it's always challenging. And I think we all know here that it's challenging for people to stay engaged and to stay motivated to work on some idea uh, and not get burned out or, or something like that. So um, uh, community engagement was one of the topic and field we talked about. And of course, uh, community growth. Uh, how can we grow the community if we have the proper tools for the support, for the engagement? How can we develop the, the network of people and how can we keep the resources and capacities to sustain that uh, growth? Um, we've done that by exchanging the examples, the good one and the bad ones. <laughs> uh, so the bad ones are important because we're learning from them. So um, I've added some ex uh, examples from Wikimedia Serbia's project and from a lot of challenges we had um, uh, regarding the community topics. Uh, so also I've heard a lot of uh, examples from the uh, these projects. So it, it's always a good opportunity to learn. So why, why I'm talking about this is because these are the things uh, that uh, CE community is really familiar with. And I know that these topics uh, here um, are represented. Uh, they are always, always a part of the uh, some conferences, program, uh, events uh, um, that we are attending. So we always talk about these topics and uh, that's why the CE community can really um, be successful uh, um, in terms of the Unlock project. So how can it be successful? Can it, we can go on. Okay, so um, I'm talk. Uh, I just wanted to to emphasize that, that these are the opportunities for the C community, uh, because actually C community can apply with the project, and we know that a lot of countries and chapters and uh, communities from the C region uh, don't have enough uh, resources, funds um, they can use for innovative projects, and this is the opportunity to um, get those resources and um, uh, use them for innovative ideas. Uh, we also know that innovation is sometimes maybe expensive or sometimes if it's new, people don't want to uh, support it. They're not sure in that. So this is actually, um, uh, that's why this is a, a good, good opportunity for that. You can uh, increase the network of the partnerships uh, you have. So you don't have to, uh, as Kanika said, you don't have to 
to do this just um, within the Wikimedia chapter or user group or thematic organization. You can also partner with other organizations and institutions to increase the outreach um, and uh, get to the more people uh, for them to be touched by free knowledge enthusiasts. Uh, so as I said uh, here, the innovation was really uh, important because um, uh, I, I read uh, when I got the call, I read somewhere that uh, these are, this is the call for the people who are changing the world. So, uh, and after that, I read the project and it was really, okay, that's it. <laughs> that's, that's the right definition. Um, so this is um, an inspiration uh, for all of us uh, and actually, a way to think as, out, outside of the box. And of course, um, the last but not the least, this is the really good opportunity to attract uh, new people to the movement. So yes, those people are going to apply with some different idea, but it, they will also hear about the um, uh, the other Wikimedia project, the Wikimedia movement, and, um, and exp expand that free knowledge pool of people. Um, we have here a question, is this open for informal groups and individuals also? I think, Anika, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it is. Unfortunately, I cannot see the chat while sharing uh, the screen, can... so that's... Um, don't worry, I will read the questions if we have okay. one. Uh, yeah. So, um, so how do you get uh, involved into this? You can follow the Unlock website and Unlock Twitter account for updates regarding the Unlock project in the uh, next year. Um, and um, you can uh, spread the word within the, your community because um, this is something your community maybe uh, is interesting, uh, interested and want to uh, start a, a new projects and a project and. Uh, Mm, uh, new ideas uh, uh, for uh, to be uh, to implement new ideas. So uh, you can also read about previous projects and uh, you know get inspired. Um, I think that um, these previous projects are important because uh, you can actually you don't know maybe you, some of these projects are interesting for your country outside of the unlock project. So it, it is an uh, inspiration in uh, another way as well. So we have here Philip said, searching for unlock Twitter account definitely doesn't give you the result you're looking for. Uh, here uh, we have here a link in the presentation. Uh, so um, uh, we will, put, I think we will put it in, in the Wikimedia Commons category for the CE uh, presentation, so people can okay, thank have you. the no, right I, link. Yeah, I was just looking, uh, was trying to put it into the notes, but it's fine if it's on in the presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is uh, linked. So we here have the Unlock website, the Unlock Twitter account, and previous projects. So uh, you can read. And Nicole, thank you for linking the, the website. Um, so can you, we can move forward. Uh, so uh, for now, uh, this is the, the, the end of our uh, presentation uh, time. And now we wanted to uh, leave some time for the discussion. And we have some questions here prepared. And I know it's Sunday in the morning. And thank you all for being here in sun on Sunday in the morning. So um, uh, we will. Uh, we just want to uh, find out um, uh, your opinions uh, regarding this question and um, your uh, ideas and suggestions. So Kanika, you want to? Yeah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Maybe before we jump into the, the questions, um, are there any questions or needs from your side to clarify what we've just presented to you? Um, Kanika, maybe because uh, Z, I think, asked this question about is it open to individuals and um, informal groups? Maybe you can talk a little bit more about this because, yes, it's open to individuals, but they have to be a team and so on, but it's not tied to being any like chapter or formal organization. Maybe Correct. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Nicole. The, um, yeah, the program is actually very open to, to 
almost anyone in terms of um, you can not apply as an individual because we think that if you are working on, on specific projects, it it is always good to have at least one person on your board as a somehow um, partners in crimes who help them help you as a team grow through this process. So um, you can um, apply as a team, uh, the minimum of two people, um, up to five. And um, as Nicole already mentioned, we do not look for whether you are um, attached to any kinds of uh, user groups or com affiliates or any other communities. This is very open. So um, we, we don't have this kind of strict or hard criteria on that. So we actually also have, as I mentioned, you know, people coming completely outside the movement without any attachment um, to, to, to existing entities that we, we have in, in the movement just for the sake of being completely motivated to join our movement. Uh, cool, thanks. Okay, thank you, Kanika. Thank you, Nicole. Um, do I have any other comments or questions from the audience? I see uh, something in the yes. chat. Yes, I just see Philip just raised <clears throat> the questions of what is the scope of funding and how big can individuals get. Um, we currently, um, uh, for the last two rounds, we have provided um, a scholarship um, that you can apply as individual. So you apply as a team, but you get the scholarship as an individual. And um, the scope was um, 3,000 euros uh, per person, for the whole program duration. I also see another question. Uh, when is the next goal? Yes, um, <laughs> we are working on this. <laughs> um, I can, well, the program is definitely gonna happen next year, um, but we um, are currently looking, you know, um, well, to further design it and, and can't tell the exact next call date, but I think um, sometime in, well, I think, Q2, Q3, that would be something like the scope of, of the next call coming in and being launched. So just, um, well, follow us on Twitter and stay tuned. Um, and we will definitely, you know, communicate and, and, and um, disseminate the call throughout all channels that are available. Yeah, and so uh, on this thing, I would like to add the uh... Another question, uh, how many calls uh, you plan to have uh, per year and uh, uh, do you perhaps plan to uh, allow people to uh, submit proposals at any time? Uh, um, that's a good question. Um, I mean, right, oh, how we did in the last two rounds was basically that we only have run one edition per year. Um, and I mean, it always kind of depends on the resources <laughs> that um, we, we, we will have. I think that um, right now um, the setup is to just only be able to run such a program just once a year. Um, it's very, um, well, time consuming for both the teams and um, the program organization and um, very intensive in terms of, you know, providing all the support of um, individual coaching, um, expert sessions and all this stuff. So um, at right now we, we, we thought of just once a year and, um, and whether you just, you know, apply and see whether this will um uh, might fit to the next call. I think it, 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 it's best to, you know, wait for the call to be announced and see what also the scope of, of, of this call might be um, and whether um, the projects will fit into that. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, Kanika, I see that we have another question in the yes. chat. Uh, do you have recurring projects? Do you mean with recurring projects in terms of that they were already in one edition and then yes. apply. Ah, okay. Um, no, not not um, 
<laughs> not from the past two experiences. Um, I mean, what, what we are looking into is also, that would be something else in discussion um, to, 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 towards the movement is um, what happened after the projects have participated in, in the, the unlock program and um, how, how can we make sure that they um, can sustain. And um, so I think this is something that it's not only about, you know, keep on applying for, for the same program, but rather to see, okay, if you have finish unlock and created the prototype what could be the next step what do these projects need to grow further to um and uh, sustain in the future and, and this is something that we haven't find the perfect solution so far um and we actually would love to see more of um yeah other actors within the movement getting involved to driving innovations that wikimedia deutschland is not the only one coming up with this program but rather to get the whole movement involved in you know let's create a kind of innovation ecosystem so that we can have like you know step by step supporting the projects and innovation throughout the whole process that they need so maybe this would if they have an idea and need unlock right now they start with unlock and the next once they have this prototype, they might need other supporting programs and formats and process such, which Unlock cannot offer. But there are other formats that we as a movement created within this innovation ecosystem to drive the innovation. Uh, thank you, Dennis. Uh, Shamat uh, has uh, a question to clarify the scope. How far? Is it from the Wikimedia projects and how direct con connection is required? Um, there are projects that are, from, from our perspective, quite far. <laughs> as uh, I think I liked uh, how Ivana mentioned it as um, outside the box. It is definitely some, some of them are really outside the box. And this is intentionally um, picking because I think we would love to also see um, or tap into territories that what are the projects that we haven't think about and still could be relevant to the free knowledge movement? What are the Wiki future Wikimedia projects? So I think this is something that um, not only to further promoting existing projects, which we think that it is important as well, um, but equally support new and fresh and unfamiliar approaches as well. And, and I think to you have both running parallel. It's important um, to to drive um, the sustainability and also the this what what I call the innovative power of our movement. Yeah, uh, Jago has a question. Is there an overview overview of coaching and curricula? I suppose uh, this uh, could be found uh, on the page that uh, Nicole shared. Yes. Yes. Um, it's, it's on the, uh, the website and, um, we also have like, a um, issue from, from last year, um, some learnings, how the coaching has been, um, uh, has been conducted. Um, also share this in here as well. And, uh, I have a question about the demographics of uh, applicants do you know yes. uh, where you uh, have received uh, proposals from and where are the people who conduct the projects that uh, you have funded yes i mean um obviously it, the first round was very focusing on the um, german speaking areas um so we had um projects applications from germany um, Austria, Switzerland, and some of them also from the Netherlands. <laughs> and, uh, and the second round, when we scaled to the European level, um, we had, um, yeah, it, it, it was, uh, cross, cross, cross Europe. Uh, and, um, so some, uh, from, you know, UK, Netherlands, Sweden, 
Germany as well, but also some from, from the CEE region, even though I have to admit it was not so many and I, I would love to see more. And, um, uh, but there were some from Hungary, um, as I could recall. Um, and I think it was also by Bulgaria. Um, but, uh, and surprisingly, we also had like, um, uh, applications coming from India and, and, um, uh, and I think it was um, <clears throat> uh, Uganda from uh, from the African continent. So it was, um, I think since it was kind of, you know, promoted more internationally, people were, um, yeah, I think that got really aware of this type of program and, and, and you know, just try to give, <laughs> just give them a kind of try whether it's going to work or not. So, um, and, 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 and for 2022, we actually had like, you know, kind of cross team of someone in France and someone in India um, as, as a team joining the program as well. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but uh, even though you mentioned that uh, the program is mostly focusing on uh, European countries, I suppose that uh, India, Uganda and other countries outside of the European continent uh, are also eligible, right? Um, yeah, yes. In that sense, to participate in the program, yes. Um, in terms of uh, the scholarship, we then, um, it's going to be kind of a little bit difficult to um, how to process that. So this is something where we have to see, um, yeah, how, how to best work administratively also to provide the funding to to these um people coming from from communities outside europe um but um technically it would be possible and um maybe just also for you as you know spoiler for 2022 we are um we are trying to find a kind of more focus of the program not only thematically, but maybe also geographically, as we also realized that, you know, having a broad program covering, you know, attracting all Europe um, might be okay. And it was a cool lessons learned for 2022, but um, it might also be worth trying to set a focus maybe on CEE region, um, on other geographical region just to really have a clear focus on, okay, this is the region where we would like to invest in and also support um, innovations and innovators. So that's why we also having this conversation in the CE meeting <laughs> to see um, maybe who are the innovators in this um, region and the communities and how can we attract them to join the program? Uh, we have a raised hand by- Yes. Thomas. Uh, Shamat, you can join us. Thank you. I just would like to reflect your last uh, last uh, topic or answer that if we have restrictions about supporting somebody outside of Europe, we are an international network of organizations. So maybe we can solve somehow that that another region is supported by another affiliate. So the, the if if the program is is successful and it be it is it is worse to extend inter, uh, geographically. It is interesting to it, it is worse to to investigate how can it be in the movement in sure. this way. Thanks, thanks, Anna. Definitely, definitely. I think that it shouldn't be like you know our stepping stone. You know, it, it shouldn't be the, the case that okay, just because we cannot administratively process in this kind of region, we don't go there. That should not be the case. I think we should definitely rather look, okay, which region do we want to go to um, and then see how can we make it happen and, and possible. Okay, we have six more minutes. Uh, are there any other questions or comments that someone from the audience wants to, to make? Yeah, Nicole, go ahead, please. Uh, okay, um, I just wanted to say, because also um, there were questions about like the scope and about how connected um, do those projects have to be to our existing um, projects. And this is a conversation that we also often have and had and so on at Wikimedia Deutschland. So how how is the connection? And for me, Unlock is always something like, okay, 
can unlock unlock the next big Wikimedia project. So this is for me something that we should always have in mind when we run this program. Maybe we find the next diamond that we just have to, uh, um, I don't know, how can I explain it? Like, yeah, maybe the next sister project to, to Wikipedia that, that comes out of the Unlock Accelerator. So I, for me, the, the Accelerator supports either um, content or tools or so that can be used in existing projects. But of course, we are all on the quest for what's, um, I wouldn't say what's next, but what else is there that um, that can help the movement uh, bring more like um, knowledge equity and so on and bring more marginalized knowledge and communities into the, into the movement and help them uh, create access to probably also other forms of knowledge. I'm complete, thank you. Okay, thank you, Nicole. Um, I wanted to um, ask another question uh, about the nature of the projects. Uh, uh, are commercial projects uh, allowed? And uh, to what extent you can support innovators who want to uh, earn some um, profit from uh, their innovation? Well, I mean, um, that's a good question. <laughs> um, and one of the prerequisite um, when you apply as a project to the to the Unblock program is basically that um, your uh, projects are all the results that have been um, created within the program is freely accessible. So um, it's either open source, the tools that you are develop, and if it's not a software and some other forms of content or that you created or tools that you created, um, it must be at least under a CC license. Um, and this is something where I think uh, we obviously fight for and want people to, 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 to go with it as a prerequisite of the um, acceleration program. Um, but we have conversation within the program as well, you know, how to then sustain as this type of projects, how can they make money or in terms of if, if not making money, how can we still run such a pro project um, but have some how income stream within that. And, and um, I think uh, it's, it's a, again, a challenge that we haven't, completely solved so far. Um, um, most of the projects, to be honest, that we've supported, the, la the, the 10, um, they were all not for-profit projects. Um, they were all, um, you know, compliance with um, the, the requirements that we set. So open source, they um, are freely available and all stuff. And I think, um, yeah, people find or the projects team somehow find ways how they get further funding um, to 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 sustain and and continue with their projects. Yeah, but but no, then, no, sorry. No, I think, but it's it's a valid question. I think this is something we we need to also see. Um, I mean, uh, uh, is it a hard criteria to have like truly for profit? Um, uh, um, projects joining the program? Is it something that we want? Um, if it's for profit, can they still make their code open source uh, uh, or any kind of content of freely available that is still aligned with our vision? I think this is something, um, I mean, we, we haven't been faced this challenge so far, <laughs> but uh, it might, it might be the case. And, and this is something where we have to, to, to think about. Yeah, thank you. Uh, because uh, the CC license that uh, is compatible with the Wikimedia projects allows uh, commercial use, so it doesn't restrict it. And uh, as Philip mentioned uh, in the chat, it's possible to create an open source uh, project uh, which uh, uh, will have some kind of income stream from advertisements and uh, any other integrated things. So what in that case, like uh, he mentions uh, a Star War Wiki with advertisement. Would it be would it be possible to support uh, one such project? Hmm. I, I mean, <laughs> it's it's a very theoretical example, I think, because like most people who apply to these uh, grants don't have that in mind. I, yeah. I would I would wager. Um, so, 
I think it would just be interesting to 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 know who we can contact because yeah. those organizations might be like interested in like sustaining the project, but like maybe using methods that aren't necessarily compatible with how the Wikimedia projects work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True to that. Good point. Um, it is kind of creating an ethical dilemma case here. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, uh, I think uh, we're running out of time. Oh, yeah. Uh, I would like to thank you, Kanika. Thank you, Ivana and Nicole, for your time and uh, your presentation. Uh, I think it's uh, really useful to know about uh, this uh, initiative and uh, uh, funding programs so that uh, people from the CE region can get interested and apply with uh, their innovations. Uh, so yeah, um, great ending. Thanks, thanks for having thank us you here. Everyone. Yeah, and uh, also thanks for the very interesting questions that you've raised um, and the discussions that we have. And um, please, please stay in touch with us. So if you have any further questions, um, reach out to me or Ivana. And, and let's let's continue the discussion on how to innovate in free knowledge. Yeah. And I think before before you close this meeting, I think uh, I, Ivana, we wanted to have a group picture, uh, yes. so like yes. Sunday morning yes. group picture. Ah, uh, just a second. <laughs> okay. Let me turn on my camera. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So, are you ready? <laughs> Okay, one, two, three. Okay, yeah. Great. Thank you all and have a nice day on C meeting.